a consultative forum on this proposed constitutional amendment, whose purpose is to provide a platform for the consultative engagement on the actualization of the two-thirds gender principle. I take cognizance of the fact that the follow-up meeting, the, that they had, this is a follow-up meeting of a meeting that we held in September, uh, so it was November last year. Uh, I therefore wish to thank Honorable Harriet Chagai, uh, Chigai, yeah, for, uh, the, the, for sustaining the conversation and uh, keeping these consultations alive. I noted that the last time that you held the meeting, I wasn't present, but you were the number one trending topic. Yeah. <laughs> And so I was quite happy about that. I was following. Uh, and I think as we discuss this, the fundamental uh, uh, principle of democracy is that the achievement of democracy presupposes a genuine partnership between men and women in the conduct of affairs of our society in which they work in equality and complementarity, drawing the mutual enrichment of their differences. That is where we are starting from. So sometimes people think this is just a women's issue. It's for the betterment of our society and ensuring that everyone is included. It is further argued that an enduring democracy secures meaningful participation of youth, women, persons with disabilities, elderly, uh, minorities, and other marginalized groups in public life and decision-making processes. In this regard, Kenya uh, can be regarded as a constitutional trailblazer because already in the articles of our 2010 constitution, uh, we have been uh, we have been able to ensure that state organs are required to take steps to address the needs of those vulnerable groups. Um, as regards gender inclusion, Article 27A of our Constitution provides that the state shall take steps and ensure that no more than two thirds uh, of members of any elected or appointed position are of the same gender. However, despite these provisions, our 12 years since promulgation of our 2010 Constitution. Specific legislation has uh, yet to be enacted and to operationalize this constitutional provision. Um, the state under the constitution is empowered to ensure that the two-thirds gender rule is adhered to in all elective and appointed positions. We know that and this means in all the, the three different arms of government. We have been unable to push for this. We have had uh, many challenges, the, the matters have come before our courts our courts have made various pronouncements, agreeing with our arguments. Unfortunately, those orders have not been obeyed. And, uh, and also, uh, we have had, even within Parliament itself, there has been the Chekonga bill, there has been Duale 1, there has been Duale 2, there has been uh, the Boschole bill 1, Boschole bill 2. Again, uh, that has not seen the light of day. But I am, uh, I am strengthened and uh, and uh, optimistic about what's going to happen now, because we can now see some light in the tunnel. Uh, I think the women of Kenya have spoken about the reasons why we're not able to elect women in sufficient numbers, and we all know where the problems lie. It starts with our political parties, because uh, they don't make a deliberate effort to ensure that who gets the party ticket is a woman. But on this one, we can compliment all the because ODM stood by women like Gladys Wanga and gave her direct ticket despite opposition by very formidable members of the party. So for that, we must congratulate ODM. If all our political parties could do that, then uh, we, we would be very, very far away. I know I was personally disappointed when uh, Honorable Sir Pantuya had to step down from the position, uh, from running for candidature as a, as a governor because pressure was put to bear on her and informed that probably she was not going to get. But she still got the CS position, for which we are also grateful because at least she just wa uh, wasn't left to fall by the wayside. One of the things I strongly believe, and which I'm asking Honorable Chigai to please be able to look into, the biggest challenge we have in Kenya is that we build women leaders. When they get here, just waiting to ascend to the very top, we drop them and start fresh ones again. And then we build them, and when they get somewhere, we drop them. You see, for women to ascend to the highest positions of leadership in Kenya, they have to have longevity in leadership, uninterrupted. And that's why for me, I was personally invested and excited 
that persons like uh, Aisha Juma and uh, Soipan Tuya were able to move to the next position of the uh, cabinet secretary. Why? At least we keep them there. Imagine if we lost Aisha and she just fell out. Yeah. What would have happened to build another Aisha Juma to get to that level is not easy. Yeah, a woman who has, from the age of 23, been winning elections non-stop. Had we dropped her, it would have taken a long time to build another person from Kilifi County to that position. So that is something we must get. And that's why, for me, women getting re-elected is a very important thing. We just don't want women elected. We want them to be elected and re-elected. Because it's only after three terms that you become a formidable leader, either if you're in the executive or in the in elected office. Just one, if you look at people like Martha Mangari here, uh, she's on her third round. She's had to beat now. But had she come in for one time and left, that would be the end of it. And that is and that is what we must make it our business to ensure that not only do we get women elected, but we maintain them until they have made sufficient change and built sufficient cloud that they can get uh, where they are. Um, I think um, I think our, we all know that, uh, so let's not forget the journey that we have traveled and where we have reached. But at this juncture, at this time, uh, allow me to acknowledge and thank His Excellency, the President of Kenya, for giving credence and genuine support and commitment to the gender movement. Uh, I usually call him the only gender activist in, uh, in the executive. Um, I, I think we all started, and uh, many people had conversations with me around the time when he signed the, the Women Charter. I never told me, but that's just a piece of paper. I said, no, it's the first time a leading presidential uh, candidate has put a signature by his own hand in his own name that I commit personally to the women of Kenya, not the Kenya Kwanzaa women, the women of Kenya, that I shall ensure that the two thirds gender rule is implemented and that women are promoted. Uh, we saw the commitment by the number of women that were put in cabinet, and the further commitment of ensuring that he had an office dedicated uh, for women's advisor in his women's rights advisor uh, in his office. So even as we go forward, let us not forget uh, the journey that we have traveled, and uh, even as we are trying to find a matrix for being sure that we can implement this particular rule. I'm going to the president's, uh, the president's uh, uh, communication to parliament because that really has been the second step in showing commitment. The first step was signing the charter. The second step was ensuring that we had sufficient numbers of women in cabinet. And then this third one is now uh, sending this particular message to, to parliament. And on this message, it was very clear that there was the two thirds gender rule and the, and the establishment of the leader of opposition and also the establish the uh, entrenching of specialized funds uh, in the constitution that is the national government affirmative action fund and the national government constituency development fund again that is important because as you know those funds have constantly had court cases around them and each time the argument in court is that they are Mm, they, that, uh, th those, uh, that they are unconstitutional. So let's put them in the constitution that that conversation can end. Because how many times can the courts uh, direct us? As it stands now, I wish to confirm that the two thirds, uh, the, the matter in the president's message to parliament on two thirds and the leader of oppos uh, official opposition have already been referred to the J Justice and Legal Affairs uh, Committee for consideration. And I seek all of your support that when it does come before uh, that particular committee for the public hearings, do show up in numbers, even the women members of parliament. We can attend that committee meeting as friends of that uh, committee. Uh, on specialized funds, it has, it, is in a, it has been referred to a joint parliamentary ad hoc committee uh, that is uh, between the uh, joint committee of uh, Senate and the National Assembly. And then um, the one of ensuring that uh, our standing orders are, looked, uh, are uh, amended so as to ensure that cabinet secretaries are able to come to the House. Uh, that also has been given to the House Business uh, Committee. 
Um, now, uh, speaking of this issue, like I said, we've attempted many times to try and bring, uh, uh, try and implement the two thousand in the rule. And you see, uh, and I think I also need members of the press to correct this. Many people think that the two thirds gender rule is about women. No, it's not about women. It's a human rights issue. <laughs> right to equality is a human right. It is entrenched in the United Nations Convention on Human Rights, which Kenya is a signatory, and then which Kenya has domesticated by putting this in our constitution. So it's not about women. And I can confirm to you, without fear of contradiction, is that in 10 years' time, the two-thirds two gender rule shall be used to increase the number of men in parliament. Yes. I can tell you that. I have a conviction I will do. Because the way the country is going, I know that today, 60% of the women in law school, and the persons in law school are women. 80% of the people doing PhDs in this country are women. Yes. So, that day is coming, and I've asked the men, please support this, because we will need it to populate you people in parliament and appoint you positions, you know that? Yeah, because you shall be endangered species. And I'm not saying this as a threat, that's the reality. The other second reality as we go forward with this is that there is a live advisory on the president's desk from Chief Justice Maraga to dissolve parliament. It was not for the previous parliament, it's for any parliament. parliament. So it can be acted on now. And we know that our president has gone on record publicly that he will obey court orders. So the reality is, if we pressure him to obey the court order, he will sign that proclamation of dissolution of parliament. And that's the reality. So this is not about begging anymore. It is a reality that is with us. But again, let's not uh, be too comfortable about that. There's a lot of work the women's movement has to, has to do, and there's a lot of work that has to be done by Kewapa, the Kenya Women Parliamentary Association. And I'm happy that at least on this topic, despite our uh, dif political differences, this is the one thing that we agree on. And I will be seeking that we all support each other on, uh, on, this, particular, on this particular bill. So we've said, that the opportunity is here. There is a live um, uh, uh, advisory that's on the desk. But also, we must help each other in fighting the misinformation and disinformation. Yeah? When it is deliberate uh, uh, lies that being put there. Increasing the number of women in elective and appointive positions is not an issue that's going to raise cost. The wage bill issue should not be related to having more women in positions of decision making. Because I think that is the story that was peddled, that, uh, that uh, you know, having, implementing the two-thirds gender rule is going to, put, is going to increase the, the wage bill. Because if we are talking about the wage bill, okay, then we want to cut costs, let's reduce the number of counties. And while we're at it, let's not have deputy governors. And while we are at it, let's not have MCS. We can have to eight, 10 of them only, isn't it? Yeah, so why is it when it's a women's issue, suddenly the issue of cost begins to come in. And we know that there were people who were sponsored at that time. And uh, it was led, there was a member of parliament who started that issue. Uh, and uh, obviously it was a gun for hire at the time, and I, I'm not afraid to say it. And his job was to begin to bring in the wage bill issue so as to kill the issue of the two thirds gender rule. Uh, at that time, they wanted even to delete the clause that says not more than two thirds. Yeah, there was a question amendment that uh, had been, uh, had been uh, pushed around that, that fact, that, uh, that section requiring no more than two thirds for any elective and appointed positions be deleted from the constitution so that we stop worrying about these women who are giving us a lot of uh, problems. That was the talk at that time. But now we are at a good place. We must seize this chance. I know the challenge that we're having is which formula to use. 
the formula that has been presented uh, uh, and, uh, uh, after various consultations from the Office of Vulnerable Chigai uh, was, is that yeah, we, what calculation do we use to find the two thirds? Since we already have the goodwill from the executive on that, what calculation do we use for, the, for particularly parliament? The argument was that, uh, strictly speaking, it, uh, it should be 349 or 350 if you count the speaker as a member of the parliament then calculate. We're not to, at the moment, uh, the issue pressing is not in uh, the Senate. It's the National Assembly. I know that uh, strict advocates in the women's movement said, you know what, we should use a calculation of 349. Yeah. But again, we have to be aligned to the fact that there is uh, economic challenges in the country. Suddenly increasing the number of uh, members of parliament can also turn the public against us. So let's meet the public at a middle ground. And the persuasion that has been given to us is that we make a constitutional amendment to make the composition of parliament for the purposes of, the, of achieving the two-thirds gender rule or implementing the two-thirds gender rule is 290. So that we use the 290 constituencies so that at least it will be evenly. Uh, distributed, and that's the persuasion. And I know that many women in the women's movement that I've spoken to have agreed, because I told them it's better to get 50% of something than to get 100% of nothing. Because currently we have nothing, and if we get into a big fight and argue about ourselves and say we want 349 or nothing, you know what's going to happen to us? You know what? The president can decide, you know what, I have more pressing issues. There's economic challenges in the country. There's a drought. There's what? You know what? I can deal with you. If you can't agree, I can deal with you people in a few years' time. So let's, I believe that this is the closest we have come. And uh, if you speak to the women who have come before us, Zipporah Kitoy, Niva Mwendwa, Phoebe CEO, they will all tell you that, my God, we, we have walked this journey. From the days Niva, they led women of Kenya to go to Beijing. This is the closest we are at the door. You know, so let's not drop the pot at the door. Let us grab it. You know what? We will continue. Once we've got something, let us continue now fighting for the next step. So that is my today I've come to plead with you people. It took me a long time to accept that. But I eventually told myself. Is it better to get something or to get nothing? And that is, that's the reality. And we have a great opportunity. The wisdom uh, that has been put in by Honorable Chigai's office to say, let us, because there's some various constitutional amendments that need to come to Parliament, to make one constitutional amendment bill that will deal with the four issues that are very important to parliamentarians, the National Government Development Fund, the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, the Oversight uh, Fund, as members of parliament, we able to oversight the executive and the uh, office of the official leader of opposition. What happens is, it allows, it brings the stakes higher. Because I can tell you, if you try and put, uh, bring the 2000 gender bully on its own, people will show up in parliament. That's the reality. I've tried. I've tried that, and we, I, and uh, you, they won't have any interest. So, but if it includes some of the things that they hold dear, then we bring in numbers to come and promote our cause. And I think that is wisdom, because you have to use the best route to be able uh, to get this. And believe me, again, this is some of the things that across the political divide. We all agree on that one.